morning. This is a service for Good Friday. My name is Heather Tapsell. I am a reader in the Trinity Benefice Folkestone. On Good Friday, normally on a Friday morning, we would process from the town after a service and we would do a walk of witness with three crosses at the front. We would go up to one of the hills and place the crosses on the top so that the whole of Folkestone could see our crosses and remember what Good Friday is all about. However, due to the pandemic, we will not be able to do that this year. After placing the crosses on the hill, we would have had service and sometimes people would sit and picnic. And then some of us would walk back down the hill and go to a church and we would sit for an hour at the foot of the cross. So this service is an hour at the foot of the cross. You will have to pause my video after each reflection to give yourself that time between each reflection. So I hope during this day you can find some time at home, find a quiet place and just sit and contemplate what Jesus did for all of us. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Alone, I am alone at last. It is so black then I can almost touch the darkness. I can no longer hear the footsteps of the guards. Even they have gone. I am alone indeed. Peter, what of Peter? He will be feeling alone, even if he is with the others. When I turned and looked at him, he caught my eye, just as the cock crew. The horror of his act would dawn upon him then. He had done the very thing he had believed himself totally incapable of doing. Denying three times he ever knew me. But now he will be swallowed up in his remorse totally inconsolable. No one but I can ease his pain, but I am here, and he, where will he be now? O oh, Peter, all those times we've shared a laugh, a sorrow, a confidence, a meal. You were the one who dared to think you might walk on water, and you did. It was you who wanted to build a home for me upon the mountain. And now, after that, all that, you say you do not know me. I wonder, is he but the first of many who, in the years ahead, when pressure comes, for all pretend they do not know me. And if they do, will I hurt every time as much as I hurt now? I know it is the work of Satan who desires to sift them all like wheat. I know. But it is dark and I am cold, and there is no one near. 
O oh Father, I do not know whether it is easier to stand before the Sanhedrin, see their hatred and listen to their twisted reasoning, to be beaten, punched and mocked by the rough, casual soldiers of the temple guard, or to be left alone to think. Father, I am afraid. Is that wrong? So many times I have said to those who followed me, Fear not, for what is there to fear? If I have put myself into your hands, never have I been afraid before, but what is it I fear now? Soon, soon they will come. I decided then, within that garden, that oasis, which always in the past had been a place of peace. I decided there to go the way you had chosen for me. Your will, not mine, be done. There is no going back, not now. But Father, keep me through these next long hours. Having come all these years with you, I do not want to fail you now. Eternal God, in the cross of Christ, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Never will I forget that day. It's etched too deeply in my memory. I had timed it well. Living out in the country, I had left it until the first day of the Passover to arrive in Jerusalem. That way, I did not need to find lodgings for an extra night. It was early in the morning when I arrived, but everyone was up. Not so surprising, I suppose, in view of all that there is to do that day. I had expected crowds, of course, but somehow I found that I was trapped. There was some commotion down the street, but in the city that must be often so. Some Roman soldiers were shouting out, Make way! Make way! That was their officer, I think. Then some coarse voice cried, make way for the king. I turned, for I had never seen the king before, expecting Herod on a horse, but no such thing. Then I saw him, and a poor thing he was, some king. His body looked fit enough. This was not some weakling. Yet as he drew level to where I stood, he fell. I saw great wheels upon his back and ran down upon his head a crown of vicious thorns. He was carrying a timber and its weight in his weakness caused him to fall. I had no idea who he was nor what he'd done. I remember thinking it must be some particular evil deed to be punished in this way. Instead, I looked away at the centurion on his horse. For a moment my eyes met his, and that was it. 
he tapped me on the shoulder with his staff and said, pick up that wood and follow us. It didn't dawn on me at first just what it was. But as we drew near a hill, I understood. It was the crossbar for a crucifixion. Then the full impact hit me in a flash. This was an instrument of death upon my back. By touching it, I had become unclean. As surely as if I brushed against some whitewashed tomb, I would be excluded from the feast. My journey wasted, no Passover meal for me. And all because some wretch, some criminal, had not the strength to carry his own cross. I was so frustrated, so helpless to do anything to set things right. I would gladly curse the man whose cross it was. But then I noticed something of the crowd on either side. They were not mocking, jeering. They were in tears. Then the prisoner spoke. Daughters, daughters, do not weep for me, but for yourselves. There was such compassion in that voice. We passed through a gate in the city wall and began to climb the hill. They told me it was Golgotha, the place of a skull. And there they did it, banging in the nails. I could not watch and turned my head away. And as I did, someone spoke. Forgive them, Father, for they do not understand what they are doing. I looked to see whose voice it was. And do you know? It was he, the man they crucified. Who was this man, such a man as this? He hung there for a while. I wanted to go, but where? I could attend no Passover. So I lingered to see what would happen. There were two others there also crucified, but I had only eyes for him, the one whose cross I had borne. I cannot say how long it took but suddenly I noticed it was dark. It could not be the evening. It could not be. I later found it was midday. Yet it was dark with an eeries, eeriness I do not know before. For three hours it went on. Then suddenly I heard... My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The crowd fell silent. Then another shout, this time different. It's done. Then he died. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope, 
and fear may be placed at his feet, all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Lord, the soldiers nailed you to the cross, divided your clothing and then sat down to watch you. I know they were tough and used to many tasks, but was this really something in the line of duty? Nothing more? Could I do it? Could I sit and watch him die? I like to think that I could not, but, given the right circumstances and careful preparation by the media to make me feel this man was particularly evil, I had the suspicion that I might. What does it mean for me? For I suspect I have not really understood even yet. I know, of course, that the affair you took my sin, that you hung on the cross for me, that there you took my place and won for me eternity and offered me forgiveness for every wrong that I had ever done. I know that, Lord. And even if I have not plumbed the depths of all that means, I may still receive the benefits you won for me. What I have not learned is what you're hanging there teaches me about myself and how I live my life. I have to remind myself as I look at you on the cross that this is God. This is what God is like. Totally self-giving. It did not count with you what we were like. We were not good, attractive, quite the reverse. We had spoilt your beautiful creation by our selfish ways. But now, now, now we have responded to you, some of us. Maybe there is some faint spark of love in us, which might be worth encouraging. But then, we were your enemies, yet you still died for us. This is the heart of God revealed. You have created me in your image. I am to be like you, loving everyone, and love to you means giving all. This is not comfortable, Lord. It was all right trying to picture you alone in that dungeon cell, waiting for morning. I could cope with that. It was interesting also, imagining how Simon might have thought, excited on his journey by the joy of celebrating Passover that year, actually in Jerusalem only to be excluded because he had touched your cross. I can think of that with no difficulty at all. It is when I think of what it means for me. And there's another thing, Lord. You did not worry in the least about your reputation. People totally misunderstood. They mocked you, taunted you. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. In a way that was true. If you were to save us, you could not save yourself. But it was a willing sacrifice. It is not the nails that held you but love.
you let them misunderstand and did not say a word. With me, if I am misunderstood, I must explain. I have to tell them why I did just what I did, so they will understand and will not think badly of me. You were content to leave your reputation in the hands of God. Lord, a frightening thought is forming in thy mind. I know your cross is empty now, and in two days' time we will rejoice in the wonder of Easter morning. But have you left your cross empty for me? As you lay down your life so willingly for me, are you inviting me? without any compulsion to lay down my life for you. My apologies. As you lay down your life so willingly for me, are you inviting me without any compulsion to lay down my life for you and for anyone and everyone I meet, the unlovely as well as the lovely, inviting me not to worry about my reputation but leave that with you. If I refuse that invitation, Lord, if after watching at your cross, I refuse. Must you again turn to your father with the words, Forgive them. They know not what they do. O oh Lord God, set your passion, cross and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord, and to us sinners forgiveness and everlasting life and glory. For by the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, God now and for ever. Amen. My thanks go to Ken Gardner for writing these reflections at the foot of the cross, a meditation for Good Friday.